Amen. So this is our, our session about the good and beautiful you on January 19th, 2023. So in let's see, I know um, Minister Ted hasn't yet had a chance to get the book or review it, no problem. Um, and I'm not sure, Courtney and Tara, if you guys have picked up the book or, or not. But the, this first section um, discusses how we all have a soul. So did he, did you get to look at it at all, Tara? No? I still have to purchase it. Okay, no worries. That that gives me a, a note, you know, to know where I'm going. So what let, let's let's ask that question. Let's start right there. What what is a soul? Just anybody, you know. If you hear the word soul from your biblical teaching, from your life's experience, what would you say? is a soul or the purpose of a soul or just anything related to soul i'm i'm gonna take a chance okay. <laughs> uh your soul is you okay <laughs> I like your, um i mean you know um feelings and you know feelings emotions that make you up i Yep, your character. Yeah. yeah. Your thoughts. Yeah. That's great. You know, I think I think all of those are, are very descriptive, um, accurate terms, you know, like th that that thing that makes you you that can you know connects you to God. Let's 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 put it, you know, with a with a God reference. So what I did, you know me in the in, in the videos and such. I, I I have a short, like I think it's um three minute video. I want to show you that talks about the soul. Then I wanted to have a quick, you know, chat about it, and then we can get into some of the things that the book is talking about. So I'm gonna attempt to share my screen so you can hopefully see it. And if you not at a place where you can view, maybe you can just hear what they're saying. Um, so let me get to my share. Let's. I think this is the right one. And you guys have to let me know when you can see my um my uh web browser. I see it. Okay, let me do this. You still see it? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna play it right now. Is the human soul? We're going. What is the human soul? We're going to answer that question. You can also discover more on gotquestions.org. The Bible is not perfectly clear as to the nature of the human soul, but from studying the way the word soul is used in Scripture, we can come to some conclusions. Simply stated, the human soul is the part of a person that is not physical. It is the part of every human being that lasts eternally after the body experiences death. Genesis 35, 18 describes the death of Rachel, Jacob's wife, saying she named her son as her soul was departing. From this, we know that the soul is different from the body and that it continues to live after physical death. The human soul is central to the personhood of a human being. As George MacDonald said, you don't have a soul. You are a soul. You have a body. Personhood is not based on having a body. A soul is what is required. Repeatedly in the Bible, people are referred to as souls, especially in contexts that focus on the value of human life and personhood or on the concept of a whole being. The human soul is distinct from the heart, the spirit, and the mind. The human soul is created by God. It can be strong or unsteady. It can be lost or saved. We know that the human soul needs atonement and is the part of us that is purified and protected by the truth and the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the great shepherd of souls. Matthew tells us that we can turn to Christ to find rest for our souls. Psalm 16, 9 through 10 is a messianic psalm that allows us to see that Jesus also had a soul. David wrote, Therefore my heart is glad, and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also 
dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol or let your Holy One see corruption. This cannot be speaking of David because David's body did see corruption and decay when he died. But Jesus Christ's body never saw corruption. He was resurrected and his soul was not abandoned to Sheol. Jesus, as the Son of Man, has a soul. There is often confusion about the human spirit versus the human soul. In places, scripture seems to use the terms interchangeably, but there might be a subtle difference. Otherwise, how could the word of God penetrate even to a dividing soul and spirit? When the Bible talks about man's spirit, it is usually speaking of an inner force which animates a person in one direction or another. It has been said that there are only two things that last— the word of God, and the souls of men. This is because, like God's word, the soul is an imperishable thing. That thought should be both sobering and awe-inspiring. Every human being who has ever lived is a soul, and all of those souls are still in existence somewhere. The question is, where? Heaven or hell? That answers the question, what is the human soul? On our website, gotquestions.org, you'll find a deeper discussion and recommended resources. If this helped you, give us a... Okay. Was that helpful at all? Yeah. I, I really like that you made it plain that our souls are, are everlasting, if we want to look at it that way, and our bodies are temporary, that we're, we're a soul with a body as opposed to how, how we often are interpreting it is that we're a body that has a soul. So I think if we, if we really look at it as we are a soul that has this temporary body, it kind of makes our existence take on a different, um, a different likeness, a different format where we can understand that this, this existence is, this current existence for us is, is really just a temporary thing. You know, but our, as as was noted by the author of the video, you know, our our souls will last for eternity, um, and so it's that thing that you know that part of us, like you you all mentioned, the the character and the feelings and the thoughts and all all of those things, those things that are us, but and the soul connects us connects us to God. It's not the physical being; it's it's the thing that lives on after these physical bodies dies. Um, you know, physical bodies die. So just knowing that, you know, how does that make make you feel thinking about a soul? You know, from either from what you um, gathered from the video or just our discussion so far, what does that make you feel about your your soul? Wow! <laughs> I think about it, doesn't it? Put it in a different light, right? Yeah, you know, I I often wondered about that, and um, hearing that is gave me some understanding of of the soul. It gave me some understanding of it. Look at look at this, Minister Tut, and I, and I hope I'm not about to say something that's gonna make you sad, or I hope it makes you you glad, but. You know, I know you. I know you love your brother, love your brother immensely, and I know you miss your brother immensely. I see the post every once in a while, and especially around his birthday time and stuff. But it it has to take. I hope it gives you some comfort to know that, yes, physically that body. You know, he's left that body, but he's mm -hmm. still in existence. He's 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 prayerfully in in the bosom of Christ and just sitting at the foot of Jesus right now. You know. It's, it's just all of those things that should, should be able to give us joy, you know, even though our, our loved one might not be here right now. You know, it, it made me think about, you know, my mother, you know, who's been passed away now for, for what, almost yeah. nine years now and, and how I, I miss her immensely. But it gives me some comfort knowing that, yeah, I can't see her. I can't go to her house. Yeah. But she still lives on. Her soul still lives on. And that that to me is very comforting, and it may may or may not be to other people, but it's just not nice to know that th this is not the end. Like our existence here is just not all there is, 
And I yeah. think that makes it more pertinent and more important that we develop a relationship with Christ, that we try to emulate and, and, and walk in the image of Christ. Because if we got to be around for all time, for eternity, I, I certainly don't want to spend that in hell. I'm just I'm just saying <laughs> that's a long yeah. time to be in hell <laughs> forever. Yeah. <laughs> But I cut you off. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I I was just agreeing with you. You know, when I say I miss him, I I I I uh I miss his presence, if that makes sense, you know, because we yes. were so close and we did things together. But um I know I'ma see him again. I know it. <laughs> right. You know. I do. I know I'm going to see him again, but I think sometimes I do. I get impatient, <laughs> if that makes sense, you know. So it makes a lot of sense. Like, you know, I, 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 I want to go to heaven. I just don't want to go right now, you know. So, yeah, <laughs> I, I want to get there, but I'm not in a rush to get there, you know. So it kind of falls suit with what, with what you're saying. You know, I'm confident. I do. I do 100 percent believe that I, I will be there. But I, I don't I don't have to test that theory right now, you know, my my yeah. understanding. <laughs> so <laughs> I want to spend as much time here because it's limited. So I'll spend as much time here as I can, you know, yeah. I go to the to the eternal existence. So and I don't know, um, you know, um Tyra Courtney, if you have any comments at any time, just jump in because we you know we just free we just free flow. Everybody can jump in. But um so when we when we and it's, it's some points that I'm going to pick pick out in our book um, that we can talk through, even if you haven't read it. So one of the things that they talk about in the introduction part of the book, and I, and it, just a little bit of, um, I guess, encouragement or advice, whenever we buy books, sometimes we just jump to chapter one and start reading. But actually spend some time, if you if you don't do it already, reading the, the introduction or the foreword and things like that, because it's usually a lot of good information you know in those five pages or however many pages it, it is small amount of pages but some good info sometimes and so one of the things that the author talks about is how sometimes our spiritual formation um gener um degenerates degenerates into technique where we focus on practices and not on focusing on the soul you know so as, as an example we might go to to church and we might do certain rituals on, on this Sunday and certain certain ceremonial things on that Sunday. And it starts to become that we're, we're, because we're doing the practice, we, you know, that practice of whatever it is, we interpret that sometimes as we are feeding our soul, that we are building a, a, a good spiritual foundation. But a lot of times, and, and I'm sure somebody here can attest that we get more into a habit of doing things and we forget sometimes why we're doing things. Mm -hmm. you know, we, 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 we have communion. Most churches have communion at least one Sunday a month. Um, and sometimes when you really get down to it, I, do, I, I wonder when we're going through that, are people going through the motions of the communion or are they really understanding and letting that time be a good presence for their soul to connect with the Holy Spirit, to connect mm -hmm. with Christ and God as to the reasons why we're doing a communion and the benefits of doing a communion and all of those things that come with it, that the unspoken things, if you will, that come with the actual rituals, or are we just doing the, the, the rituals because it's out of habit? You know, does that make sense? You know, why are yeah. we doing it? And, and, and our soul is important, you know, um, in our pre this is the fourth book in the series and one of one every chapter i believe let me every chapter has a um what's called a soul training exercise where it helps you to spend time getting to know your soul and getting spending time getting to improve your soul and and uplift your soul and so based upon that i have built like a um a seminar, if you will, that I'm, I'm trying to get the format for it. I would like it to be like a Friday, Saturday, maybe all day Saturday kind of seminar to, that, that can be put on just to teach people how to slow down and really invest in their soul and feed their soul and grow their soul. 
And, and so these books, these techniques in, the, in these books are certainly um, helpful for that. So I guess the point here is the practices that we do, the ritualistic things that we do, the ceremonial things that we do, yes, we, we do them. Yes, sometimes they're necessary, but they're not the point, if that makes sense. The point is to, is to connect ourselves in, in a more clear way to Christ, to the Holy Spirit, to God. And if these practices are not doing those, doing that, sometimes we might have to evaluate why am I actually doing this? You know, what what is the benefit to my soul for this activity? And I can guarantee that the majority of people in the world that call themselves Christians never really ask themselves that question about what they're doing. What what am I doing? Is is it ritual? Is it ceremonial? Is it feeding my soul? Where does my soul fit into this? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, um, one of the other things that the author talks about on, on, in, in the beginning of the foreword, he says the Christian faith is not primarily about belief and practice. It's primarily about what kind of people Christians become. And that, to me, signifies that, you know, we should be changing into something. We should, on a, uh, you know, be something visibly, tangibly different as our journey progresses. We should not be the same persons we were when we started our Christian journey as we are today, especially those of us who've been walking this walk and on this journey for a long time. You know, I can say that for somebody, you know, who may have... um just started but over time we we should change and, and you think about this somebody that you know we've all we've all started new jobs at some point in our life right and when we when we start those jobs we come in not really knowing where things are what to do how to get it done what's really expected and they usually give us some sort of mentor or some processes that we can follow to help get acclimated and as time goes on we find ourselves having to rely on those crutches, if you will, less and less because we've internalized, we've we've started to connect, we've started to grow in that position. And so, but are we doing the same thing with our Christianity? Are we are, are we growing our soul in that case that, that's going to help us to become better, better images of Christ, um, to 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 really emulate uh what Christ stood for and what what we should be be standing for. And so I guess the ask there is that we all look back over our lives and really assess because it's an individual thing. Am I where am I where I could be in my growth? Am I where I should be in my growth? And what I, what am I going to do to help me to make those changes that are necessary so that I can grow or continue to grow? Because none of us have arrived you know, none of us you know, have, have gotten there, no matter how far along in the journey we are, unless we're Christ, we still got a lot of work to do. You know, as long as we're human, we still got a lot of fallacies and issues and challenges. Even on our best days, the Bible te teaches us that we're as filthy rags. So we, 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 we have to always strive to do better and move forward. And, and part of that is, is making the time, the time for our souls. Amen. I see Minister Sarah is here. Amen. Um, another thing that the author talks about, and again, you know, I'm just hitting some points that I saw in a book that were really, I thought, really interesting. So you, know, you all can jump in at any time. But another point that I saw was God designed us with a deep longing in our souls to be wanted, to be loved, to be alive, and to be connected to God. Can, can we can we relate to that? You know, really, we we all want to be, we, we all desire to be wanted. We all desire to be loved. We we want to be alive, you know, we and we want to be connected to God. Those are things that that give us, you know, great, should give us great joy in our lives. You know, in Christ, we are all of these and more. And when we live in this reality, we become the unique person that God created us to be, you know. You know, sometimes we we walk a walk where we say that we're unique or, or we say that we're great and all of these kind of things, but are we really becoming a person that God created us to be? And we can't be the person that God created us to be if we're not in tune with, with Christ, if we're not in tune with the Holy Spirit, 
you know, we might we might do some quote unquote great things that the world recognizes and great things that give us rewards and accolades of men and things like that. But the greatest thing that we can do is become that image of Christ where we, we share the love of Christ with all. And that includes those that we love and those that we might not like so much. Yeah. You know, do do great by us and those that, you know, might not treat us so well. We we gotta we gotta love soul. A soul has to love a soul. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's like um when I when when I train the new preachers, it's like yeah, I, I try to get them to understand that. In this business, and using the term business loosely, I'm, you know, I'm not talking about like money and that like that. But in this, in this, in this dispensation of being ministers, if you don't love souls, you're gonna have a hard time, you know, um, sharing the love of Christ with people. You know, we have to love people when they up, when they down. We have to yeah. focus on their soul. If we focus on the sin all the time, we'll learn to hate people. We'll dislike people. We'll We'll distance ourselves, but if we can always focus on, you know what, that's still a soul that God loves. And, and as long as they, they're still on this side of heaven and, and can reach out to heaven and, and, and accept Christ, it's still hope for them despite what they did. And that's a hard concept for us as humans to, to deal with and digest. Um, Gerald, I, I'm sorry I was late, everybody. I had some please, issues. Uh, please jump in, um, yes. But, but good evening to everybody. And I have been reading the book. I, I tried to catch a little bit of it while I was on vacation. But as you're talking about souls and loving souls, when you think about, when I think about the love of a soul, the first thing that comes to mind for me is the dedication of a baby. And we give that soul back to Christ. And when we think about babies, I don't know too many people that don't love babies. <laughs> and Gerald, you have a new baby in your life, so I know you can kind of relate to this. But when we offer up that soul to Christ, we have to sort of treat our fellow man in the same way as we treat that that child, that baby's soul, because we're all children of Christ. We're all babies in the sense of um, when we think about our souls and we think about how we want to dedicate that soul to Christ as a baby because we want the very best for that soul. We want that soul to be part of God's kingdom. We want that baby to grow up with the with the knowledge of Christ. And so when we think about how we treat other people and when we view it as a soul, we should be thinking of it in a similar light in the sense that that soul is precious. Every soul that we encounter is precious, just like the soul of that baby when we go through the ceremony of dedicating that baby back to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And, and if, if you, you put it so simply, if we can just look at souls that way, yes, we will see the evil that men do, but we will also see that Christ still loves them despite what, what, what they did. And I think that is missed sometimes because let's let's face it, as human beings, we our heart hearts can get hardened as we get older and older and older and we see things. But if we keep Christ as the focus, that kind of erodes and erases that hardness and allows the love of Christ to shine through, regardless. Um, and and in that we have to become the best image of Christ that we can be. You know, the author talks about us becoming. Some we, we like to try to become the best the best versions of ourselves, but the best version of ourselves, if if, if the most we are is, as as I said recently, um, as, as filthy rags, what what what's the best version of that? You know, what is, is there a best version of that? You know, so in order to be to be formed into the image of Christ, we we have to invite the Holy Spirit to help us you know, to help us do, to become more like Jesus. We cannot do it on our own. You know, recently I was talking with somebody and they, well, when I, I come to church, when I get myself together, but if you had, can get yourself together, you would already done it. We, we, we don't have a power just to do that. We can't do it on our own. We have to stop trying to become this best version of myself and just allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in, the Holy Spirit to guide us into becoming the, the best image of Christ that we can become. So as we become the best image of Christ, it will improve ourselves. And that will start us on the path 
to becoming this um, better version of ourselves, you know. So um, there's another part in in the forward where the uh, in the subsection where the, uh, um, my hope for you, where the author says, you know, we have to see ourselves with wonder. We have to see ourselves as sacred. That's kind of hard to do when we've been down and when we've been out, when we've been abused, when we've been um, treated unfairly, when we haven't done things to, you know, our own self or, or, or we've done things bad to other people. Sometimes we don't see ourselves as a wonderfully created, unique um, 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 soul being that, that God just loves. Sometimes we don't see ourselves as, <laughs> excuse me, as someone sacred that God created in his own image. You know, that that you have to feel awful special that, that God just cre created you in his image, in his likeness. That should make us feel like we're sacred. You know, so even though we're flawed, even though we're broken, even though we go through struggles and challenges, even though a lot of times we don't get it right, even though we we make mistakes, we it's important for us to know that God loves us. And I hope that everybody on this call, everybody that, that sees the, the video as we go along, just understand that despite what has happened in your life, despite what you might be going through at the moment, despite the season you might be in, if it's not that much of a positive season, you are loved by God. That 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 should I hope do something just make your heart flutter, make your heart do flips. If, if the, the people around you physically don't love you, God loves you. And that, that should just be be something to shout about right there. That should be all inspiring right there. And understand that, you know, God will forgive us for the things that we've done, the transgressions, um, that we're, we're, made, we're made alive by the power of Jesus Christ's resurrection, his death, burial, and resurrection. All of that put together all of that was put together because God loves our souls. So he loves us. He, we, it's his intent for us to return home to him someday, not to be banished in, you know, into eternal hell, not to be separated from him for eternity. It, he, he wants us to come back home, but he's given us the choice to decide which path that we'll take. And don't think for a moment that it doesn't grieve God, grieve God's heart when people decide, you know what, I don't want to go to eternity with you. That I, I just sit sometime and just imagine how how hurtful that must be to God. That something, someone, a soul that he created makes a decision that I, I don't want to come back home ever. I'd rather go to the dark place. Mm -mm. But that's how my mind works. I just sit and think about that kind of stuff sometimes. So as we see ourselves, as we come to see ourselves as a unique and important and loved by God, guess what? We have to see our neighbors as the same way, as sacred and loved by God. And I notice sometimes that that is hard, you know. Um, it's, it's so many people this, you know, that we love and we get along with, but there's people that we disagree with, whether we disagree with them. Um, socially or politically or 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 culturally or any kind of kind of disagreements no matter if we agree with them or disagree with them guess what God loves them mm -hmm. we're supposed to love our neighbor that doesn't that mean that despite how we had those disagreements we should still love them you know they're worthy of our compassion they're worthy of our kindness because we are all um from divine origin. Does that does that make sense? Does that help, you know, put a a different look on on the on the, the and I know somebody's thinking about right now, this person did me wrong. I'm not giving them the benefit of the doubt. I'm not gonna have compassion with them. But how many times today have we done something against God's wishes? Mm -hmm. Even accidentally where we didn't mean to do it, but God still loves us. So while and he still gives us a chance. So, so I think we just gotta learn how to be more gracious with people sometimes. And I am not 100 percent I am not saying that it's easy, but I am saying it's easier when you when you're walking in the image of Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's something you can just do with the snap of a finger. 
Sometimes it might go take going to that prayer closet. Sometimes it might be saying a word, um, word to Christ first, and then and then speaking to them. If we are to pray without ceasing, and 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 and, and Christ is always, you know, in, in our lips and in, in in our voice and in our thoughts, then it makes it a lot easier when you have to deal with those negative type of people and, and situations. Again, I don't. I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying it's something that we need to consider because we're made in the image of God. Um, and, scri and scripture tells us that we need to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Mm -hmm. So if I, again, stop me anytime, if I flip over to the the last part of the introduction, it says the true narrative about our identity cannot be disclosed by reason, but only by revelation. Only God through Christ can reveal to us who we truly are. So what is that? What what, what comes in your, your heart when you hear that? Only um, God, through Christ, can reveal to us who we really are. What's that? What's that say to you? What's what? What does that stir up in your spirit? If anything, mm -hmm. say that again, Gerald. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna say it again. So, so let me go back. I gotta flip back. So. Only God, through Christ, can reveal to us who we truly are. So look at it like this. Sometimes our image of who we really are, who we believe we really are, is made up by other people, right? Some people think we're this. Some people think we're that. We have... um. Um, different people in our lives, so even parents with their little children, you know, they 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 bring them up in a certain image of themselves of, of the child, you know. So the child grows up to think they're this or think they're that, whether positive or negative. But who we really are it can only be revealed to us through Christ. So through our relationship with Christ, we we get to the it, it determines we get to see who we really are through how we um behave as Christians. We get to see who we really are. So as an example, let, let, let's use a real rough example. You know, if you are, you know, driving down the street or, or something and somebody cuts you off in traffic and and, and you profess to be a Christian, the, if the first thing that come out of your mouth is four or five letter words and some fingers flying up, are you really, are you really in the image of Christ? Are you really a Christian or are you really something else? I was going to say, Gerald, that um, sometimes our own perceptions of ourselves um, are revealed differently um, as we go through different um, situations and life lessons or whatever. Yes. How we thought we would respond or react to something is not necessarily the case. Ooh, I, I, realize I, that we're, we're flawed. You finished your thought. I don't want to cut you off. Okay, so I really, I really like that you addressed that because sometimes we, we have, we believe we are a certain way, right? And then something can happen, and the way we respond is not necessarily how we would have liked to respond. It just, it just happens. And that, if that's if we, if it comes out as a negative response or it's something that we feel ashamed about, guess what? That gives us something to strive for. We can repent of of what of how we responded. We can ask um, the Holy Spirit. We can ask Christ to to give us more more direction and discernment in that particular area. We can mm -hmm. pray and tarry for change in that particular area. Because there, there's a lot of times, and I don't have a concrete example, but I do know that it happens where where we think we're one thing, but uh, something something come up in our life and it reveals to us, not to everyone around us, but it reveals to us that we might not be who we thought we were. You know, so I'm I'm not trying to take your statement too far, Tara, but that that's it. Just it, it was so powerful to me when 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 you said that, you know. Are we being honest with ourselves? Do we know ourselves? 
and I, I would reason to believe that even even in that it, it it takes a while for us to really know ourselves through Christ because it it really takes a while to truly get that image of Christ start to build up in our system through 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 our different learnings and practicing what we learn and studying and and things like that. So I think that was a really good um just a just a good comment. Um and I think with that it drives us to one key one key point that was made in in the first chapter in the beginning is that you have to take care of your soul. You have to each person is responsible for taking care of their own soul. So let me throw that out there. How can we do that? What are some ways that we we can take care of our soul? Just, and there's no wrong answer or right answer. I'm just looking for what you guys think. How can we take care of our soul? And even the author said initially, you know, I have no idea what that even means. Well, that's part of the purpose of the whole book is to, to get us on that path. You know, we got a whole bunch of pages to go through. 200 some pages that's going to help us to define and answer that. Um, he talks about um, there was a, some grief and unhealed trauma that that he had suppressed. And when we have grief and un, un, untreated trauma in our lives, you know, sometimes that can, can impact us and affect us and, you know, dictate how we respond to things, how we do things and, and that sort of a thing. Um, he talks about how he simply lost joy and was suffering in silence. And he made the common mistake of thinking that doing work for God was more important than caring for his soul. That that can be a controversial statement at, on the surface, but if we pull it apart, we'll see that it's not. So he said he made a mistake of thinking that doing work for God was more important than caring for his own soul. And so what that, what that, look at it like this. If he's doing all of these things under the, under the guise of I'm, I'm, I'm doing what the Lord asks, but he's not even taking care of his own soul, really, can he be a, a good, effective vessel for the Lord to use? If his vessel is corrupted, if his vessel is not fed, if his vessel is not kept whole, if his vessel is not kept clean, really how effective at the heart level is the work that he's doing for God. Is he going, at that point, are we going through rituals? Are we going through ceremonial things? Are we doing things to, to you know, because just because you're being busy doesn't mean that you're doing the right thing. Just because you're being busy doesn't mean that you're right. You know, if, if that makes sense. So we got to take a step back sometimes. And it's an old adage that, you can't help somebody until you help yourself, you know, meaning make sure that you're in a good place. Make sure you're in a, in a, in a, in a, in a right place before you start giving so much of yourself that you have nothing left. Um, you know, and he talks about the, the grief of unhealed trauma and sadness and so forth. It's a lot of people that are walking around, you know, depressed and they're hiding it. Mm -hmm going through all kind of mental and emotional financial anguish and they hide it and when you see them they say I'm blessed and highly favored I'm walking with the angels God is with me there's nothing wrong and then when they get out of your presence they they, they get really sad and they're crying and then their soul is reaching out because of the devastation that's in their lives at the moment so they anybody can put on a face and show us what they want to see but we got to love people enough that our souls can connect and say, you know what? It's something not right there. You know, Lord, help them. And we start praying for them because the people are really um, reluctant to share what they're going through. They're reluctant to reach out and ask for help. And especially that there's, there's a contingent of people that really just refuse to seek any kind of counseling and things like that. Like it's a taboo. But but it's okay to see a counselor if you need it. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to work on yourself as you try to help others and work with others. That's okay. We have a wonderful human soul, but that soul needs some care sometimes. It's just like, you know, you, know, you might have a car. Every so often, doesn't that car need to be serviced? That, that car 
that car is not going to get you where after a while if it just keep you keep washing it and it looks clean and it looks nice and it's shiny and the, the tires are nice and everything but it just breaks down one day because it's never actually been serviced this on the surface it's been clean but inside there's something not working right inside that that check engine light is coming on and we we ignoring it and we're not getting the help that we need so you might want to take that car and give somebody a ride to an important appointment, but because we didn't service the car, it might break down on the way to helping that person. So again, until we helped ourselves maintain the car, we might put ourselves at a disadvantage to go help somebody else. That make that make sense? Yes. It's a decent example. Um, and that kind of takes us to, you know, minister tell you we were talking at the beginning before we started recording about how um, we have to set up margin in our lives and boundaries. And I was talking to you about the lesson that I'm working for on that. And it's okay sometimes to say no. We, we, we It's okay to, to set up boundaries with people. It's okay to not do everything to everybody. Because if you're doing that, and those of us who have done that, you know, We've stretched ourselves pretty thin and we were no good to ourselves, actually. Right. You know, so it's okay to have, have some wiggle room and some some boundaries in there. I'm not saying you got to just do a carte blanche no to everything, but it's okay to pick and choose. It's okay to, to refer people to God. <laughs> well, you need to go pray about that. You know, you, you, you know I, I'll pray with you on that or help them get to a different resource where you stop becoming their God or don't start becoming their God even, you know? So, so, so just, just look at it like that's part of soul care. That's part of saying, you know, where the, where the boundaries are in your life. Um, let's see. So I want to, it was another point on this page I was looking for. I don't see it. But let's let's go. I missed that other thought that I was looking for. But I like I like this one. The author pointed out that God sees into our souls. He sees into the totality of who we are. Jesus looks at our worst and puts his arm around us and says, well, of course, you know, Jesus knows the truth of where we are and he does not condemn us for it. But he does have great expect expectancy for how how much we can heal. Or how how free and alive we can be. Um, so some so look at it like this. In our lives, we might look in the mirror and not even like ourselves sometimes. Where we see, where we see something that's unworthy, where we see junk, Christ looks at us and he sees gold. Mm -hmm. you know, we might not feel worthy sometimes. We might not feel like we did our best. We not we not not um might feel that we didn't make the right choice or the right decision or what we did was unforgivable or all of these negative things. But even in all that, when Christ looks at us with the with the love of Christ, he sees gold. I want I want you to remember that, you know, the next time you find yourself in a situation where you might not be feeling the best, where you might not be feeling like you did the right thing or made the right choice or you, you didn't do the right thing or say the right thing or weren't at the right place at the right time, you know, don't beat yourself up, you know, recover from it. It's okay to get knocked down. It's not okay to stay down. It's right. okay to fall down. It's not okay to stay down. It's okay to sit down. It's not okay to stay down. Down is not a place where we want to be is, is what, what I'm getting at. Through the, Christ sees us as, as such such glory. He he understands our worst, he, but he still puts our arms around us and says, you know what? I love you. I know you that you didn't do was right, but I still love you. I know what you <laughs> say was right, but I still love you. And one of the ways that we can bridge that gap and, re and, and reestablish that what we would feel is a broken connection is the tool that Christ gave us, that God gave us, which is repentance. Is to earnestly and honestly, you know, ask for forgiveness and and do what we can um, on our part to make it right. Mm -hmm. You know, because no matter what, you know, we're seen as such something so glorious and unique through Christ. 
And I don't want anybody to ever, to ever, ever forget that. Um, I, there's another section I wanted to talk about in the first chapter about how our souls want life, but that's going to take us well over the time that, that we had allotted because I really want to keep us to, to an hour. Um, so I'm going to stop right there. And for those of you that had a book, I'm going to pick up on page 12 next time. But I wanted to stop because I, I like to want to go around the room and just if anybody has any comments or concerns or or feedback or just anything about the lesson that they want to share or something that they might be interested in talking about next time so I can prepare it. You know, just, just this is the time for that. So I'm going to start with going around clockwise from what I see on my screen. I'm going to start with with um, Minister Tut. Any any feedback you'd like to give for the lesson today? And thank you for making time to join today. Uh, I was just sitting here thinking um, about myself. And some things that um, within me. And this, this year, I have been praying and asking. Well, I prayed and asked God to give me a quiet spirit. To, um, you know, sometimes I, I'm too opinionated. <laughs> I'm outspoken. And um, I pray and ask him to give me a, a, um, a quiet spirit to just, listen you know what i mean just just listen don't speak and um you know i'm a, a crossing guard for the, the kids at school nice. and i was standing <laughs> it sounds funny because i tell martin nice. you know i'm standing there on the corner <laughs> 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 that don't sound right but anyway since i went since i've been standing there he just been giving me things. And so the other day, um, I was thinking about something and he said, um, be still and know that I am God. And mm -hmm. when he said that to me, I don't know, I visualized something, I don't know, but, um, and then I said, okay, okay, Lord. So um I'm I'm just really I, I I'm just the understanding of the soul, you know, because I was kind of confused about the soul. I really was, but I understand it a whole lot uh of what you said today. Amen. Amen. And this I, this I, a good lesson. I'll send you um I'll, I'll send you the link for the for the book again so you can you can get that and then I, I'm gonna when I put the video on YouTube I'll put it in the description there so you, you know anybody wants to click on that link the, the, the name of the book will be there too yes it's called the good and beautiful you y o u so I'll make sure you get a um, link to it no problem okay, okay. Um, let's see Courtney dropped out Minister Sarah. Any comments for today? Thank you for making time to, to come on. Uh, just to say that I'm excited about uh, a deeper dive into the good and beautiful self, because I think we sell ourselves short in Christ. You know, we are new creatures in him. We are made in his likeness and image. Our souls are precious to him and our, which means our lives, our actions, our daily bread is precious to him. So I'm looking forward to not only digging deeper within, but once you get within, how does that affect those around you? So I'm, I'm looking forward to the study and I thank you for your uh, continued efforts. Amen, thank you, thank you. Um, Tara, any comments today? Thank you. Uh, for okay, Juju got any comments? You did, Juju. Say hi. Hi. Hey, that's, Juju. That's all you're going to get. <laughs> okay, that's cool. I'll I take that. I'll take that. <laughs> Amen. So let us um have our, our closing prayer. I'll do that. And then we'll we'll meet again in two weeks. I'll make sure the links get out there and all of that stuff. And we'll just carry on with it. I'm not at all trying to trying, trying to rush through this book. I think we, we did really well in the past where for this particular author, well, we just took our time because it was so, so much to just get out of these these lessons that he has and 
the books that he has. He writes in such a way that that we all can get something out of it. So, you know, again, make sure you get it. And then that way um, there might be some things that I, I see in the, in the text that I wanted to talk about, but you might see some other things and we can certainly make sure that we address those because I don't want anybody to, to not have their their um things that stick out to them, you know, not have those discussed. So, Father God, we come before you right now. We thank you, Lord, for this Lord's Day. We thank you for allowing us to have a, a, a really good session on today. I pray, Lord Jesus, that something was said in here that helped someone, that uh, encouraged someone, that uplifted someone. I ask that you bless us and, until such time as we meet again. And I ask that you allow us to, get, to gain more and more information and knowledge to feed our soul, that we might become better images of Christ and better citizens for the kingdom of heaven. We thank you, Lord. We bless you for your grace and your mercy that you continue to bestow upon us. Please cover and keep each of us. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. So I'm going to stop the recording. And then um, if you, anybody needs me, just reach out and uh, put some notes in our group me. And see you in two weeks. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right. Have a good day. Have a good day. Love you all. I love, love you too, Daryl.